What is going on guys and welcome back to 2021. Into this video we are going to be talking about one of the most fun cameras that I got in 2020. Actually let me back out. One of the most fun cameras that I ever got because this particular camera is not a Sony camera, it's nor a Canon camera. So today we're talking about the Fuji X100V and in my opinion it is a camera that you should check out especially if you're looking for a camera with the best image quality straight out of camera why don't we get started? And before we jump into the video, let me take this moment to announce the very first giveaway for the first quarter of 2021. And this time, this giveaway is sponsored by Jean. So thank you for sponsoring this giveaway. I have the Crane 2S right here, which is an incredible gimbal, one of the best gimbals that I've used, but I'm gonna let it go, guys. So in order to enter in this giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to this channel, enable notifications, follow me on Instagram and Twitter like before, but this time I am going to be posting a picture of this gimbal and probably multiple pictures, so you must comment there. And you know, the whole point is to interact with each other, get to know each other while getting a chance to win this fantastic gimbal. So I'm gonna be announcing the winner on April 1st. So good luck to all of you guys. And now back to the video. And welcome back to the channel guys. And today we're gonna be talking about the Fuji X100V. And I wanna start by telling you a little bit of the story between me and this particular line of cameras because I've been eyeing the X100 lines for years and I owned other Fuji cameras like the X-T20, X-T30, X-T3, X-T4 and I always ended up selling those cameras. You know, I couldn't get familiar with the mechanical, uh, you know, dials experience and I quite didn't like the autofocusing performance of any of those cameras. But I think the problem was because I was always looking at those cameras to kind of like replace my current main photography camera. And that's where the problem between my decision was because when I looked at the X100 line, I never looked at this line to be my main you know, camera. I always like this camera to be that camera that I'm gonna use when I'm on trips, you know, to shoot pictures of the family. And it wasn't until the version five of this camera that I feel that the camera reunites a lot of the features that I'm looking for a camera of this form factor. And in reality, it surpasses my expectations. So the main thing that I wanna mention is that this camera features great photography features as well as video features. Yes, this camera also has incredible video specs and let's talk about some of those right now. And the first one is gonna be the sensor because this camera features a 26.1 megapixel APS-C CMOS 4 sensor same sensor as the X-T4. Now by now, if you're familiar with the image quality, you know that it has great color science, great dynamic range, straight out of the camera, so you should expect exactly the same thing here. And it also features the same processor, the X-Trans Processor 4, which not only makes it a great photography camera, it also makes it a great video camera. So let's talk a little bit about the video specs, because this camera is gonna output 4K video, 30p, 8-bit, 4.2.0, internally. But when recording externally via HDMI to an Atomos, for example, you're going to be able to output 10-bit 422. So in my opinion, you know, this is great news, especially when this camera with the lens costs you $1,400 and today you can get this camera for around $1,000 used. This one can easily be someone's B camera or be someone's YouTube camera, you know, 35 millimeter equivalent. 10-bit 420, I mean, it's a great deal, guys. All right, let's talk about the shape, form, factor, and user interface of this camera, because as you can see, this camera has that retro vibe, you know, it kind of looks like a Leica camera, but at the same time, Fuji has made cameras like this in the past, in the film days, so um, this is something that I actually like about this camera. Now, when it comes to dials, you know, this camera, rather than having the two dials for the ISO and shutter speed, you only have one, but this one is actually a combination of ISO and uh, shutter speed in one. So you lift this ring right here, you turn to control the ISO, and you push it down and spin to control the shutter speed. You can also actually map out um, a mode right here to actually assign the front dial or the back dial for shutter speed and ISO as well. Or, you know, you can actually leave one functionality here and then, you know, switch one of these dials to be your aperture control. Now you also have an exposure compensation right here and you also have 
um, right over here, a shadow release with an on off button right here. And you have this screw in, you know, shadow release, the mechanical shadow release, all school style. Now, when it comes to buttons, this camera doesn't feature a lot of configuration. You know, you're gonna have simple functionality here through the buttons, but you also have the Q button right here that now, through a new firmware update, I mean new, a couple of months ago I updated and it now gains touchscreen capabilities when you touch the screen. And you can configure this, you know, to assign to whatever function you want uh, to be accessible right away. Now, at the time that I did that upgrade, you couldn't control the entire menu with touchscreen capabilities. So I don't know if there is a new firmware update that allows the full menu to be touchscreen. Gotta check that out. Now, another thing that I wanna mention is the EVF of this camera because this EVF is actually pretty unique. It is a combination of optical and also digital. Now, you can actually switch the mode by flickering this uh, little lever right here. So it switches from optical to uh, digital. And when you're in digital, you gain 3.6 million dots of resolution. So looking through that electronic EVF, even though it's small, the image quality is actually really, really crisp. Now let's talk about the screen because in this version, we have articulable screen that can actually articulate at 90 degrees for you know shooting from the waist or also 45 degrees to shooting up high. Now, this is a great addition. I just wish that this camera had a flip out screen because remember, this camera also has incredible video specs and I think that it could have been like a great camera for you know YouTube content creation, putting on a tripod and being able to frame yourself. Now, the other thing that I wanna mention is that you have all the focusing modes right here in this edge on the front. I kind of like find it a little bit awkward because you kind of like have to reach in here and remember that it's here. So it is right here. It's kind of like a rocker switch that you can actually toggle from your manual control, your continuous control and your single mode of focus. So it's there. Now, before I forget, this camera also feature a joystick. And although the joystick is very tiny, it's actually very comfortable to operate. So I find that really, really uh, useful in this camera. All right, let's talk about the ports because you're gonna find all the ports by opening this little door compartment. And the first one is gonna be the microphone input. However, this one is gonna be a 2.5, so you're gonna have to adapt it to the 3.5 to 2.5. And you also have a USB, which I believe you can also use uh, the USB adapter to actually gain uh, headphone monitoring. And the last one is gonna be a micro HDMI. Now remember, via the micro HDMI, you're gonna be able to output 10-bit 4-2-2 4K 30p in video. I mean, that is actually incredible, guys, for such a little tiny camera that costs $13.99 including the lens. Now, another thing that I recommend is that you always install this strap as soon as you get the camera. You know, if you can see the grip, it's not very deep, it's super shallow. And although the camera is not heavy, you know, a lot of the times, because this is kind of like a plasticky uh, type of material, I don't get a lot of gripping. And you know, when your hands start getting a little bit sweaty, especially here in Miami, you know, this strap saved my cameras a couple of times. Now at the bottom, you are gonna find the battery door compartment in combination with the SD card slot. So uh, this camera actually does fairly well with these tiny batteries. You know, I always carry one extra one with me when I go out and I rarely need to swap this battery. Now SD card, it only has one. So, you know, you should keep that in mind if you're looking for redundancy. And last but not least, who is this camera for? And I think the answer is going to be very simple. This is a camera for anyone that enjoys photography, especially with a retro touch, whether you're a beginner, whether you're a professional photographer. It is also a camera for anyone looking for the utmost best image quality straight out of cameras. Like I mentioned before, the quality of the JPEGs are, you know, incredible. You know, I think it's better than Sony and Canon. And the fact that you also have incredible video specs, you know, including 10 bit 4 to 2 via HDMI. I mean, this camera is a no brainer. Now you can get this camera used for around a thousand dollar. And remember, this is the lens and the camera. The lens is fairly fast at F2. And you know, you won't be disappointed with this camera. I strongly recommend it. So guys, let me know what you think about this camera. Let me know if you own one. Drop your comments down below. And as always guys, subscribe to this channel for more content like this one. I'll see you on the next video.